Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Now let us talk about octahedron. Octahedron is also an old friend. Whenever you talk about metal complexes, more often than not, you talk about octahedral complexes, right? And I think uh, in the previous class we talked about the balloon experiment. Did you or did you not? Right? So you have six balloons of equal size, right? Tie them in twos and then try to uh, tie them together. You will get an octahedron. Okay, this is octahedron. Octahedron is another platonic solid because you have more than one principal axis of symmetry. Right? Let us see what we have. What next? What is the principal axis of symmetry? An octahedron is basically made up of the three axes once again, x, y, z. Okay. What is the principal axis of symmetry? Hmm. So, principal axis of symmetry is C4. How many such axes are there? 3, x, y, z. How many operations? C4, the C4 square is C2. So, we classify it separately and then C4 cube is another operation. Right? This is your axis and there are 3 such. These are the operations 6, C4 and you can also get 3 C2s arising out of there, where each C2 is basically C4 square, right? Any other axis? C3, where is C3? And this is where you see it better if you uh, tilt the octahedron a little bit. So, you see A, B, C form the apex of a triangle and then A, B, C form the apex of another triangle which is pointing the other way. Okay. So, together if you look from the top, they form something like a David star, star of David. Okay. Now, if you think of this axis here, is it not a C3 axis? Is it not a C3 axis? Got it? Is it clear? Unfortunately, I do not have a, but I can still show you. These are the three axes, okay? at least half of an octahedron, half of an octahedron. Look at it like this. Do you see C3? I can rotate it like this, right? So, that is C3. And here you see the whole picture because you see not only the top but also the bottom, okay? C3 axis. How many C3 axes will be there? 4, 4, 3, huh? 8 C3 operations. 4 C3 axis is right. So, it is basically 3 dimensional space, right? You can divide the top part of it into 4 quadrants and divide the top bot the bottom part of it into 4 quadrants, right? And where is the C3 axis? C3 axis goes through the center and between 2 opposite, diagonally opposite quadrants. How many such sets will be there? Right? And each C3 you can have C3 and C3 square. So, each C3 operations. Okay. Next one is C2. We already have one kind of C2, right, which arises out of operation of C4 twice in succession. We have another kind of C2, is not it? Which is 45 degrees, which means 45 degrees with respect to this, which bisects the bond angle. So, second kind of C2, this is also C2, but another kind of C2, different class. How many such C2s will be there? 
Three? Three or six? Huh? How, how do you figure out it's three or six? In each plane you are going to have two. And what kind of plane is this? The way I have drawn it. Let us say this is x axis that is y axis. Then I have drawn this C2 axis in the x y plane. How many such planes can you think of? x y y z z x. Right? Each of these planes will have two C2 axis. So, six. All right? Six C2 is also that. Okay? Anything else? Yes. Do not forget I, poor I. I is also there, right? Then yes, S4 will be there, S6 will be there and now come to the planes. I, can you read that it is sigma H? Uh, that comma has come very too close. Before I send it to you, I will move the comma aside. You see the sigma H? Do you agree it is sigma H? Let us say x y plane, x y plane is sigma H. Do you agree with that? What is sigma H? Horizontal plane. What is the meaning of horizontal plane? The principal axis should be perpendicular to the plane. That is what I am more comfortable with. Right? So, principal axis. So, what is the principal axis then? If it is x y plane, z axis, if you take z axis to be principal axis, then x y plane is a horizontal plane. If you take y axis to be the principal axis, and you can, right? Then all three are principal axis. So, if you take y axis to be principal axis, then z x plane will be the horizontal plane. If you take x axis to be principal axis, then y z will be the horizontal plane. So, three horizontal planes. Okay, very high symmetry. Multiple principal axis, multiple horizontal plane. So that is why these are special kinds of structures. But don't forget, we are saying that octahedron has very high degree of symmetry. Even octahedron has very low symmetry compared to a perfect sphere. Think of a sphere. How many symmetry operations? How many? How many symmetry elements will be there in a sphere? Infinite, infinite number of Cn of any kind C2, C3, C4, C5, C6, C8, C923, infinite number of each, is not it? So, sphere is a perfect, perfectly symmetric shape. So, even though octahedron is has very high symmetry, it is nothing compared to sphere, okay. That is why in sphere everything is degenerate. Okay. Anything else? Sigma d. Where is sigma d? I have not drawn it. Sigma d will be along these C2. Right? And what do these sigma d's do? They bisect the angle between this C2 and this C2. That is why they are called sigma d's. Do you, are you convinced that these are sigma d's? To be sigma d, first of all, it has to contain the principal axis. So this, this thing that we have here, okay, does it contain a principal axis? Yes. It does, and it also bisects the angle between two C2 axes. That is why they are sigma d's. So see, so many symmetry operations are there. If you add them, what will you get? You will get 48, I think. That is the order. Order means total number of symmetry operations. So, this is called octahedron OH. Okay. Now, before going there, maybe take after all these difficult examples, take an easy example ethylene. Ethylene, does it look like ethylene? Huh? Tell me what are there? E, then what is the principal axis? C2. Now, I can see one C2 here and another C2 here. Which one you take as principal axis? Containing more, Containing more carbon atoms, more atoms, right? So this is principal axis. So this is one C two. You have one C two here. Is there any other C two? So if the principal axis is C n, and if you have at least one C two perpendicular to it, 
then it implies that the total number of C2 axes perpendicular to Cn is always n. So, you should always look for n minus 1 more C2s, okay. So, this is 1, this is 1, this is 1, 3 C2s, once again x, y, z, okay. Horizontal plane of symmetry, is it there? It is there. So, now you do not even have to look any further, is not it? Right? Which point group is it? D2H. Do not forget the perpendicular C2s. Alright? Now, another very typical example. What is this? Ethylene diamine. This ethylene diamine cobalt 3. Okay. What is the structure? I am not drawing cobalt. Okay. It is in the middle. What does ethylene diamine look like? Ethylene. Diamine, isn't it? So, what I could do is I could just draw like this: one, two, three. They look like three blades of a rotor. Okay, it's a very typical molecule that people like to work out the symmetry point group of. This ethylene diamine cobalt three. Can you tell me? what will be the symmetry point group. See the basic structure, the basic disposition is octahedral, right. So, it makes sense to start thinking in the lines of what is there in an octahedron. Of course, many of them will not be there. You will have uh, much fewer uh, number of symmetry elements there. But it makes sense to start thinking what is there in octahedron, start from there. I will start with one, E definitely there. What is the next? What is the principal axis of symmetry of octahedron? Principal axis C4, do not forget C4. Huh? C3 is vice principal axis, C4 is principal axis. Do you think C4 will survive here? No way, very obvious, okay. C3 and C2 may or may not survive, that we have to work out. I will give you the easier task first. Look for C2. You know, perhaps the easiest way of doing it is write like this. Give them names A, B, C, D. This one is E. I will just write it a little far away. F. Okay. Now try to do something. Where are the C2s? Remember? Uh, two kinds of C2 basically, right? How many C2s that we will see later? But there are two kinds of C2s. What are the two kinds of C2s? Uh, yeah, along the C4 axis and the other was in between the C4 axis. Along C4 axis would be uh, EC. You think that C, uh, C2 survives? No. So, the only C2 that might survive is in between like this. This one. So, do you think this is C2? Let us see. Let us do this operation and see what happens. Forget about the connectivities to start with, okay. Just do perform the C2 operation, see which letter goes where. You perform C2, E and C will be interchange, isn't it? Yes. Right. So I'll write E here. I'll write C here. Then, 
I made a mistake. I made a mistake. Let me write it here. Actually, D and E get interchanged, isn't it? D and E get interchanged. So D comes here, E goes here. B and F definitely get interchanged. Are you okay with that? B and F get interchanged. Sure. So C comes here and A goes there. Is that right? Now, what were the rings? B C was a ring, right? B C was a ring, right? Let me join B C. Then E and D and A and F. Now tell me, allowing for my pure artistic skills, have you not got an indistinguishable molecule? You have, right? Right? How many such C2s will be there? Three. Okay. Now, can you try the C3s? Do not forget where the C3s are. What is the easiest way of uh, working with C3s? By drawing that star of David. Okay, these are not bonds, they just guides to the eye. Okay. Now, if you look from the top, from this corner, what do you have? I have D if I look from the top B C D, then I have D on the left, B on the top, and C on my right. Is that okay? D on the left, B on the top, C on my right. You understand from which angle I am looking? Huh? Do you understand which angle I am looking from? Okay. So, think of the triangle BCD. You see BCD? So, BCD, think of BCD as an upward pointing triangle. Now, do you understand which, from which direction I am looking? Yes. Huh? BCD is the upward pointing triangle and then EAF is the downward pointing triangle. Is that so? Right? So, if I draw that in the star of David form, what will it look like? D, B, C and then what is the downward triangle? E on the left, A on the right, F at bottom, right? What are the rings? B C, E D and A F. Right? B C E D E F B C E D A F. These are the actual rings. Let me draw the rings. B C A F. We have drawn it, it is a little difficult anyway. And D E is easy, easy to draw. Okay. Now let me see, let me perform this C3 operation and let us see if it will survive. B C D E A, 
f is that right a turn clockwise all right forget about the rings while turning just look at the letters have i turned correctly just considering letters nothing else now join join what d and e you don't need to look any further this is not a symmetry operation so what do we have to do how many c3s were there ha huh? 8 c3 operation so 4 c3 axis so now similarly you have to try out all the 4 c3 axis this c3 hasn't survived that's for sure what about the other c3s that is what you have to work out okay i let that uh, i leave that to you if you cannot do it we'll uh, tackle it in the next class okay because it's just brute force you have to look at all possible c3 axis i give you the answer one c3 axis does survive one c3 axis survives so you have c3 and you have three c2s so point root is d3 this is a very celebrated example of d3 point root okay nothing else is there d3 so try to find that c3 axis by yourself now let's come back to this now so the previous discussion was by and large from cotton's book this discussion is a little better in carter's book so i'd like to draw your attention to something that we are going to use later extensively and there is group subgroup relationship and actually we have already discussed that today we said right that you start with a tetrahedron and you stretch it you get d2d so its d2d is like a subgroup of tetrahedron okay similarly uh, what we have seen is this uh, d3 can arise out of uh, tetra or uh, tetra octahedron so let's see what happens when you start with an octahedron oops have i brought the book so what i planned is this is an octahedron molecule ma6 can do you see ma6 ha huh? now let us think of two pathways let us say we substitute two of the a's by b's whatever a and b might be that doesn't matter a is a ligand of one kind b is a ligand of another kind okay first let us consider this i have done a substitution like this actually here what we have done is we have substituted by three b's so this become m a3 b3 what is the point group m a3 b3 so the answer is written beside it thankfully it is very small in the projection it is c3v it is almost like two ammonia molecules back to back is as that the bond angles are not correct for ammonia isn't it so see c3v is a subgroup of oh h OH. you can go from c3 oh to c3v by chemical substitution and this is actually very important because all the time what we want to know is what happens to the energetics or spectrum etc when we do a chemical substitution okay and this is what is going to provide us with that answer and if you take another route start with ma6 right and perform this kind of a substitution axial substitution right two a groups opposite to each other have been substituted by b what is the point group i am just hoping that i was fast enough what is the point group what is the principal axis c4 c4 no surprise principal axis was c4 even for octahedron what is the difference here there are three c4s here you have only one c4 one c4 that bmb is the only one c4 
C4, no, we are turning with respect to that. Okay, only one C4 survives. The other two C4s are gone. Okay. So if, if the principal, if there is a single principal axis, what is the next thing that we look for? Do you have a horizontal plane? Do you have a horizontal plane here? Yes. 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 This A4 plane is a horizontal plane. And do you have C2 axis perpendicular to the principal axis? You do how many? Four. Four. So no need to look any further. You also have diagonal plane. You also have inversion symmetry, right? But all that is not relevant as far as nomenclature is concerned. You just call it D4H. So D4H is a subgroup of octahedral. Now, if you do a further substitution, instead of two Bs, you have a BC. Then what happens? C4 survives. Horizontal plane is gone. So, is this a, what is the point group? C4? D4? C4 V. The perpendicular C2 axis are also gone, but you have horizontal plane, sorry, vertical planes. How many vertical planes? Four or two? Sure. Four or two? One kind or two kinds? What are the kinds? Through bond and between bond. Is not it? So, two kinds of uh, sigma v, all right. So, this is your C4 v. So, C4 v then is a subgroup of tetrahedral, uh, octahedral OH group as well as your D4 H group, okay. This is something that sounds very simple, but you will see this will help us simplify our calculations to a very great extent when we actually start using symmetry to talk about molecular properties, okay. What is this? Further substitution, right? Two actual substitutions and then two other sub substitutions. What is this then? Is this C1? C1 kind of molecule? Now can you? M A2 B2 C2. What is it? Sure. C to V? This is like three water molecules with not incorrect bond angle back to back. C to V. So, C to V is also a subgroup of your C4 V, D4 H, and OH. Right? So, remember this group subgroup relationship. This is going to uh, come handy in later times. What I do is before I uh, give you the slides, I just put it in here so that you do not need this hand drawn thing, okay. Now, your time is almost over.